Three mandatory rules for managing your rental property. Welcome back to Ask Austin Harley. Today we're gonna to be talking about three mandatory rules that you have to follow before you let your tenant rent out your property. So if you don't own real estate yet, or if you are a current real estate investor or homeowner, consider subscribing to my channel and giving this video a thumbs up so that you can get more content like this because I plan on putting out more videos from the truth, straight from experience, the hardcore experience that not a lot of other YouTubers uh, actually teach about because they haven't really gone through it themselves. Before I get started, started with these three rules, I wanted to give a quick intro of myself. My name is Austin Harley. I'm a real estate agent and I own a few rental properties in Northern Virginia and I serve the Northern Virginia and Maryland area. I've been a realtor for about four years right now. I have a small real estate team called the Austin Harley Group. I do about 20 million a year in sales and I tell you that because I want to show you that I've gone through the experience and I have the understanding of seeing a bunch of exposure to transactions where things have gone bad, where things have gone good, so that I have the experience to actually teach you this content and I'm not just some guy standing in front of a whiteboard. But regardless of that, I promise you three tips. So we're gonna jump into tip number one, which is to never give the tenant your phone number. So what I mean by never giving them your phone number is you're gonna obviously have to have a way to contact them, but your personal information, your personal cell phone, your personal email address, you wanna keep everything separate. Now that you've entered the world of renting out your property, tenants are crazy. Let's just throw that out there. Tenants are crazy. There's no such thing as a solid, great tenant. They're always gonna come with some type of liability in the exchange of for them paying rent. So regardless if they're a good tenant or a bad tenant, you never wanna give them your personal information. A great story behind this is one of my very first rental properties that I owned. I had given the tenant all of my personal information, who I was, left and right, and they could find me no matter what. To this day, I still receive calls from them every now and then because they just are always constantly bugging me about something in some way, shape, or form, and it's driving me nuts. So if you don't wanna make the same mistake or if you don't wanna get called at 12 in the morning uh, about a leaky faucet or something of that sort, then don't give them your personal cell phone. A great solution to this is to get a free Google Voice number and set up a free Gmail account separate that just has the property address at gmail.com so that way you can track all communication separately from your personal and more importantly if anything bad does happen you have that separate easy to track source so that you can follow up on written text written communication uh, throughout that software rather than trying to dig through it in your phone if anything crazy goes on like eviction or something like that so step number one just as kind of a background of these three rules so you understand where I'm coming from and why I'm trying to make this video so utterly important to you is that these three rules are part of what I call the make-believe but real in this channel landlord's bible and what it is is a list of rules a list of mandatory commandments that you have to follow if you want to invest in real estate or honestly even just purchase real estate in general so if you haven't already consider subscribing because I'm gonna come out with a ton more content on these types of rules so that you don't get screwed in real estate and you can build your wealth with the ease of process from the mistakes that I've gone through step number two I don't even know what step number two is step number two is to never tell the tenant that you're the owner of the property. This is kind of a psychological thing, but when you tell someone that you own real estate, they're going to feel entitled to ask you for more. And if you keep delivering to that tenant, they're going to think that you will just do anything for them. For example, I had a tenant, my very first rental property, who asked me to fix, I think it was the back deck because some of the boards had splinters. Granted, that's a safety hazard and it should be fixed. But the way I responded to that tenant when I was inexperienced was, okay, sure, no problem. I will get that taken care of. I had a crew come out the very next day. They knew I was the owner. I was paying for the tenant. I made a check up to make sure the work was done. And that was a $600 expense just just completely gone from there. I'm not telling you to not do those steps, but what had happened following the next couple of months is that tenant felt entitled to keep on asking me for every single little thing. Oh, the faucet is leaky. Oh, this needs to be repaired. Oh, that needs to be repaired. Every single thing. And it's not just the psychology of you just saying yes every single time, because obviously you got to put your foot down and tell them, look, I'm the landlord. I'm managing this property. I am not the owner of this property. And this can get a little bit more in depth. And just to clarify exactly on this, certain states have laws where you do need 
need to disclose who is managing the property in, in case of the owner or the landlord. And if it's not a professional management company, obviously you have to list down their contact info and all that fun stuff. I'm not telling you to lie to them if you're the actual owner. All I'm telling you to do is be very creative with your wording so that they don't think that you're the direct contact, the owner 24 seven. There has to be some sort of wall, their barrier in front of you to the tenant so that they don't blow you up at 12 a.m. in the morning for a leaky faucet every single month because it's gonna drive you nuts and it's going to make them feel entitled to keep on asking you for things. So number two, and the second most important rule in this video is gonna be to never tell them that the, you're, you're the owner of the property. And the final rule, one of the most important rules in this entire video, if you're not gonna follow anything else I tell you, you have to remember this rule because it's so critical to your success in real estate investing. And it's going to be to actually visit the property throughout the lease. Now. If you're not located near the house, try to find someone that you trust or that you can pay, such as an inspector, to do some type of checkups for you. If you're near the house, if you're following my one hour rule that I've made in any other video on real estate that I firmly believe in, buy real estate that's within an hour of you so that you don't have to constantly make drives and checkups out there. A house still does have regular maintenance and 99.9% .9 of tenants out there are not gonna have any concept or uh, understanding of home ownership and what it means to maintain a home. And so 99.9% .9 of the time, you're gonna have something broken or a leak, something very minor or small, or maybe something major wrong with your house. So you need to do some type of quarterly, monthly, or half a year biannually inspection. And it's so crucial. And the easiest way to get around this, just from a legal perspective, is you are allowed as a landlord to get access to your house, because you're still the legal owner, with 24 hour access or notice, from the tenant and they've given you permission. What you can simply state to them, because you're not gonna tell them that you're gonna be doing a checkup to make sure that they're not like doing anything crazy inside your house and that everything is maintained, but you're just gonna tell them, hey, do you mind if I stop by to change out the air filter? Just come up with some type of excuse that allows you to gain access to the property to make sure there's no pets in it. Uh, that's another crazy story is tenants, no matter what you put on a lease, won't follow it. <laughs> just assume the worst that they're going to violate the lease in some way, shape or form. You don't have to get worked up about it, but it's about you staying in charge being the manager of the property, not the owner of the property, and staying one step ahead of them. It's kind of like babysitting. Doing quarterly checkups is extremely important. When you do quarterly checkups, you want to create a sheet or a reason of why you're gonna be there. You're not there to chit chat with the tenant, become best friends with them, or exchange information. You're there for a specific reason, and you want to scan the entire house, scan all the major systems, and if you don't know how to do these, I would recommend you to look this up on Google, look this up on YouTube, make sure that the filter is installed correctly if they've been changing it. Tell them what they're not doing in an email or text follow-up and then continue on with your life. I promise you these three steps will make your life so much easier if you're managing properties and I beg you, I urge you not to hire a property manager even if you're on the near brinks of just getting exhausted because it's just going to completely diminish your cash flow and defeat the purpose of an investment property. So if you like this video, if you thought it was fascinating or if you have any questions or disagreements with me, leave it in the comment section below and give my video a thumbs up or a thumbs down. If you didn't like me, give me some feedback. If you have any more dire questions about how to manage real estate, how to get into real estate, or even if you're a person that wants to get their real estate license, leave it in the comment section below so I can make a specific video exactly for you. Thanks so much for watching my video. This is Ask Austin Harley signing off.